Yaha Lien Lando. This is a greeting in the Denina language. As we start tonight's ceremony, we acknowledge the Denina people and the land we occupy as their ancestral lands and recognize the local Kenaitse Indian tribe. I'm Gary Turner, director of Kenai Peninsula College. Welcome to this year's joint Kenai River Campus and Kachemak Bay Campus commencement. Due to COVID-19, all University of Alaska commencements were canceled. I know how difficult that is for graduates, their families and friends, and all KPC faculty and staff. This is KPC's 50th commencement in our 56 years. I want to thank a special committee that came up with this unique way to celebrate our commencement, a new beginning. This year, college-wide, KPC will award 36 Associate of Arts degrees, 41 Associate of Applied Science degrees, nine one-year certificates, 28 GEDs, 34 state welding certifications, and 18 other University of Alaska degrees. Students, I understand how hard this journey has been, particularly this semester. You've proven your resilience and ability to overcome unbelievable odds. My message to you is that you should take a look in your rearview mirror tonight and then charge to the future tomorrow. Here's what I ask you to do. Remember how you got to this point. Remember how hard you worked and the doubts and the fears that sometimes seemed insurmountable. This is especially true since the pandemic changed our lives so drastically. Most importantly, think about and thank everyone you can who had a hand in your success. In closing, Michelangelo said almost 500 years ago, the great danger for most of us lies in not setting our aim too high and falling short but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. And my quote that I've used for many years is, keep pursuing your dreams. You should never run out of them. Consider them your own personal fountain of youth. Again, congratulations to our graduates and a special thank you to everyone who has made their success possible. Be safe and be healthy. Special congratulations to our graduates from Kenai Peninsula College. Hey Sea Wolves, Chancellor Sandine here at our tribute to our grads in our 2020 graduation day celebration. So greetings to grads, greetings to family members and friends who are watching this video today. Now this is not really how we expected to honor our class of 2020, but as you know, arenas and gathering places across the state are closed and in fact, the Alaska Airlines Center on the Anchorage campus has been turned into an auxiliary hospital. So this is a unique year, one that we will not soon forget, but let's show our resilience as Seawolves. We are here celebrating for one reason and one reason only. You did it, you did it, you earned your degree or certificate and that's a big, big deal. So today is the culmination of your dreams it is the culmination of a lot of time studying and reading and doing projects and presentations, organizing all the things in your life. We know that University of Alaska Anchorage students on all of our campuses are a unique breed. You do many, many things in addition to being a student and you bring a lot of experience into our classroom labs and other activities. You are diverse, you are dynamic, you are energetic. Many of you are the first in your family to earn a degree or certificate. Still more of you are responsible for taking care of family members, either children or older family members. A lot of you are military service members or veterans, so thank you for that. Over 90% of you work while going to school and many of you work full time while completing your studies. Some of you competed as an athlete while going to school. 
and the vast majority of you participated in community service or campus service activities while earning your degree or certificate. Now, maybe some of you feel that you didn't have that quote unquote normal college experience going straight through. But believe me, you have not missed a thing because this week, thousands of students like you are graduating at universities across the United States. But very few of them have earned degrees or certificates while doing all of the other things that you do. So be proud because you are intelligent, you are smart, you are organized, you are able to complete things, you're flexible, and these are excellent qualities that will serve you well throughout the remainder of your life and career. Plus, remember, you're the COVID-19 class, the one and only. I myself am a first-generation college graduate. I'm the eldest of five, divorced parents. Neither of my parents went to college. And in fact, my father dropped out of high school to join the military in World War II. Now, don't get me wrong, my parents were smart. They gave us a very good life. But I must say, in, in today's world, my life would be totally different if I had not had the opportunity to access higher education and earn my degrees. So for me to be here today on this video and recognizing your work and seeing that you had opportunities to change your life through education just like I did, it's very, very special to me. Now, it's customary at these sort of events that the speaker will give advice to the grads. And so I'm going to do that too. You may be surprised at my advice and the source of that advice, but it's relevant to what we're going through right now with COVID-19 pandemic and our hunker in place world. So here goes. There's a children's book called Little Blue Truck. I've been reading it to my grandson a lot over FaceTime these past weeks, and maybe some of you are familiar with it. The hero of the book is a little old blue pickup truck who beeps hello to all the animals that it sees as it's driving through the country roads. One day, a very big, important dump truck comes barreling down the road. Really important things to do. Very fast, doesn't have time to acknowledge or say hello to everyone. Wouldn't you know it, that dump truck gets stuck in the mud. And who comes to the rescue? Little blue truck. But Little Blue Truck can't do it by him or herself. And all of the animals that the trucks befriended on its travels come to the rescue. And both trucks are released from the mud. So happy, happy ending. But the moral of the story to me is this. It's important to be helpful. It's important to take the time to say hello and to be nice to people. It's important to make and keep friends because you never know when you might need them. Now students, I know you, I've spoken to many of you, I've observed you, I've seen your work, and I know you are already like the little blue truck. You're helpful, you help others, you make friends. And my advice to you is this, as you go through life and you get your career and you're doing important things, don't forget this quality. It's very important we get through tough times by sticking together. So graduates and your families, congratulations. This is a real important day. I know you will go on to do wonderful, wonderful things and I can't wait to see that. After all, you are Sea Wolves and you're part of UAA. Thank you.
Hello, Kenai Peninsula College Class of 2020. I'm Bill Pop, and I'm honored to be your commencement speaker on this important day for you and your family and friends. So 37 years ago, work led my wife and I to move from Anchorage to the peninsula. We built a life on the Kenai for 25 years and raised our two kids in a community that cares a lot about family and each other. And in 2007, work took us back to Anchorage. But the Kenai still holds an important place in our hearts and I'm so happy to be invited to share this important day with you all. I am a big supporter of the University of Alaska. Our son and daughter are both graduates of the University of Alaska Anchorage. And during my time on the peninsula, I was a big advocate for the Kenai Peninsula College as an important center of quality education and workforce training for not only the Kenai Peninsula, but for Alaska. Every one of you receiving degrees today are examples of success that the University of Alaska produces each and every year. So congratulations, you've made it. You are now officially a college graduate. It's a pretty special accomplishment, not only for yourself, but for your family and friends too. As a newly minted college graduate, you are now equipped with skills and abilities that are above average in Alaska. Really, only one out of three Alaskans can claim your level of education you now have knowledge and skills that will give you many advantages in your future. Your years of hard work have finally paid off and now the really hard part begins, taking this degree and turning it into something meaningful. Now there's the obvious path that you could take like getting a better job, making more money, or enjoying a better quality of life. If this is your path, I wish you the greatest of success. But I hope you might consider a different path. The path of a leader, a leader in your community, a leader in your work, a leader that can help chart the future of Alaska. Being a leader is not to say you can't earn the rewards of a better job or a better life. You can do both. It's just a harder path to take. But the outcomes are much more rewarding from my point of view. You can be one of the next generation of business and community leaders Alaska so desperately needs to chart the future course for our communities and our state. Can we rely on you to help keep Alaska on the path to becoming a truly great state that it is destined to be? I hope so. You've proven you're not afraid of work to work hard to accomplish your goals. Today is a big milestone in the journey that is your life. Now you're moving on to your next milestone. So where are you going? What is the next big thing that your life in your life that you are going to make happen? No matter what your next goal is, give it the same energy and focus you just put into your education. You are unstoppable if you choose to be. You are an Alaskan and you can do anything you set your mind to. Now the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the terrible impacts it is having on jobs and the Alaska economy is going to be with us for a while. Depending on your career path, a lot of jobs are going to be hard to find in the coming months. But eventually COVID-19 will be a distant memory and our economy will return to growth. And your skills will be needed right here in Alaska. Alaska's future remains bright because of people like you with the skills, focus, and love for Alaska that will make that bright future a reality. So are you a leader? If you think you are, then step up. Alaska needs you now more than ever. Moms and dads, job well done. I congratulate and thank you all for the time, energy, and focus and love you have given your graduate over the years. You have much to be proud of today. And friends and family, thank you for being there when these graduates needed you most. And graduates, you have much to be proud of today also. Enjoy and savor your accomplishments. Give mom and dad a virtual hug, families and friends the same, and thank them for having your back all these years. From a safe distance, I want you to thank your teachers and the KPC staff for everything they did to support you in getting your degree. And you can give yourself a pat on the back. You do deserve it. Because tomorrow is a new day and you have a long road ahead of you. I wish you the greatest of success and good fortune in your journey into the future and ask only one thing in return. Be a leader in everything you do, make us proud. Thank you so much for letting me be a small part of this important day. Good luck.
everyone. Congratulations, class of 2020. You did it. This was not an easy task. You studied hard, juggled busy lifestyles, and kept a steady balance to earn your degree. Your efforts have finally paid off. I may or may not have sat in classes with you or shared a class online, but here we are now connecting for our graduation. Honestly, I wouldn't have been able to attend if it weren't for this virtual opportunity, and I'm honored to be able to share this achievement with all of you. I wanna take a moment to thank families, educators, staff, and friends for your support and encouragement. Your involvement has motivated confidence along this journey by welcoming smiles, listening ears, valuable guidance, and laughter to lift our spirits. These vital relationships are strong, and I have personally felt mine from thousands of miles away. Thank you all for making a positive impact in our lives. I wanna share a quote from Serge Kahili King that powerfully resonates during this time. We are all connected to everyone and everything in the universe. Therefore, everything one does as an individual affects the whole. All thoughts, words, images, prayers, blessings, and deeds are listened to by all that is. A lot has changed within the last couple months. Most of us are experiencing uncertainties about our future. We are often told to keep sight of our future as we work towards our goals. Yes, we can still do this, but don't allow it to consume you. Have faith that you will find your way to accomplish these milestones. In the meantime, take a deep breath while centering your thoughts on the present moment and focus on the positive energy that surrounds you. Remember that you are not alone. Check in with your family, friends, mentors, and community members. Stay connected. Take time to tap into your connections virtually, telephonically, or within six foot parameters. Get creative and enjoy these moments that help sustain you emotionally and cognitively as you navigate new paths, develop new skills, and function in ways you never imagined possible. Your dreams, aspirations, and futures remain within each of you. Each one of you has your own unique, beautiful path to discover. Along the way, you'll face obstacles. You will stumble and you may fall, but keep moving forward because these experiences will strengthen your perspectives and skills as you continue your lifelong journey. We are powerful as individuals and empowered in numbers. We each have valuable talents, skills, and ideas to share. Together, we are innovating amidst the pandemic in real time. Our involvement is a significant piece of the big picture. How you persevere will be one of the proudest moments of your lives. You will have a series of achievements in your life that will contribute to your legacy and inspire generations to come. Take care, everyone. and good evening. Uh, my name is Raleigh Van Natta. I'm a student at KPC and allow me to say congratulations um, both to my fellow students in the class of 2020 and to the professors who've had to put up with us for so long. Uh, we, we made it guys. This is a big accomplishment and we should all be very proud. I've been asked to provide a few words of encouragement for tonight's ceremony uh, which is easier said than done. Obviously as we finish the school year online and have a graduation ceremony over Zoom we all know this is a scary time. Normally someone would get up on a stage and talk about how the world is, is our oyster, um, about all the exciting times ahead of us and the greatness we can all achieve. But I know that it doesn't necessarily feel hopeful right now. In the words of Arthur Fleck from the film Joker, is it just me or are things getting crazier out there? I'm here to tell you that it is getting crazier out there. And I think that deep down, we all know that nothing's going to be the same when we come out the other side. That being said, we will come out the other side. Um, in the words of Robert Schuller, tough times never last, but tough people do. The fact that we're here at this ceremony at all shows that we have already proven ourselves capable, that we know how to persevere and how to succeed. So I just have a couple of thoughts before we bring the school year to a close. I encourage you to be who you are, be true to who you are, and to be different. 
we all know the Gandhi quote, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. But I feel like we often overlook the fact that in order to make a difference, you have to be different. You have to be unique. You have to be special. Celebrate your differentness wherever you are in life, and you'll make that corner of the world that much more special. Be at peace with who you are because, well, if you're not you, who else can be? And I understand that as we look on the world today, it might feel like there's, we can't make much of a difference. The world is bigger and faster and in many ways more ruthless and unforgiving than ever before. And I'm not just talking about the virus. In the grand scheme of things, it's easier, it's easy to feel relatively powerless. Uh, and maybe we are, <laughs> let's be honest. But the little things we can do are by no means insignificant. J.R.R. Tolkien probably said it best when he said, I have found that it is the small everyday acts of ordinary folks that keeps the darkness at bay. Small acts of kindness and love. Not everyone can contribute to sweeping, sweeping acts of heroism and bravery or strokes of unparalleled brilliance. But everyone can make a difference wherever they are, no matter how small. I've noticed that in this world, there seems to be an in the academic world anyway, some obsession with the importance of leaders, making leaders, becoming a strong leader, what have you. But the truth is that not everyone is called to be a leader, and that's okay. It's okay to be a follower. It's okay to support others. It's okay to not be in control of some things. It's okay to ask for help. Guys, and I, I struggle with this too, it's okay to ask for directions. Just because we're leaving school doesn't mean that we're never going to be taught again. I encourage you to keep seeking mentors, people who inspire you and who will help you to be the people you want to be. I guess what I'm trying to get across to you all tonight is that we've been studying for years, learning how to be good students and good employees and whichever field we might go into. But while all that is important and will be important in the years to come, it's so much more crucial that we learn how to be good people. And that might not always be intuitive. Sometimes the best we can do is, in the words of Princess Anna from Frozen 2, do the next right thing. Even if we weren't at this moment facing a global pandemic, life in the wide world can be daunting. Things will get harder, but it's nothing we can't handle. In the words of Queen Elizabeth, keep calm and carry on. Although a lot of our classes were forced online this semester as we put ourselves in quarantine, I remember several of you from classes back when we had them face to face. And when I think of the class of 2020, I see a group of outstanding scholars, determined and confident, who know how to persevere and make their own dreams come true. So although we're in a scary time right now, I'm not worried for the future. If the KPC class of 2020 is any indication, the world is in good hands. Thank you. We made it. I don't know about you, but I've been going to college every semester since the fall of 2017, with the exception of last summer's semester. So to be here today across the finish line is a victory I've been dreaming about for a long time, as I'm sure most of us have. A short three years ago, I was sitting in Mr. Sparks' math class, one of the best math classes I've ever had, mind you. Fresh from work, covered in metal shavings and soot. 
What an experience to go from working in industry for four years to being back in a classroom. Well, I thought I was going to be the oldest one there, not unlike Billy Madison. I was surprised to find there was a healthy blend of students. There were some working ahead during their high school careers, and there were adults like me who were taking night classes while attending their professional careers. After more assignments than I could count, the studying, the tests, the finals, the accommodation of schedules, everything else that composes an education, I'm done. And we're done. While I put forth maximum effort towards my studies, it cannot be said that I did this alone. My wife was my number one supporter. During my time in school, she worked full time, mothered our first child, then bore, birthed, and started raising our second one. She took a massive burden that is associated with daily living that should be shared by my shoulders and put it on hers. She encouraged me when I felt discouraged, motivated me when I felt like slacking, and was there to proofread assignments and offer advice. The role she played cannot be understated, and this honor of being class valedictorian is as much hers as it is mine. Look around you, wherever you are. Maybe you're alone. Maybe you have family surrounding you, patting you on the back while you watch this. Whatever the case, someone, somewhere, some way helped you get here. My encouragement would be that you figure out who those people are and thank them wholeheartedly. For example, there are others who played a part in my success, whether it was someone watching my kids so I could take a test, the teachers accommodating me when work interfered with a deadline, or my company providing me with a good living to support my family while I was pursuing my degree. Thank you to all of you for helping me be here, and to my dad who passed away, motivating me to change my life's direction and ultimately leading me here to your screen, I love you. But this day isn't just about me. It's about each and every one of us graduating this year, and I only get to talk about it for a few minutes. Your success should be celebrated in any way it can. If you're like me, you're disappointed that you're not walking in a cap and gown across the stage, shaking hands, and having the moment you've worked so hard for. And that's just before the after party. Me specifically, I'm sad I'm not going to see a standing ovation for this speech that I'm delivering. But really, it's like we're being robbed, there's no doubt about it. But if anything, this is the perfect example for what lies ahead of us. The unknown. The unexpected. Life is as unpredictable as Game of Thrones. But through all those twists and turns, save the final season, that show was nothing short of epic. That can be us. Our being here today is proof that if we're determined enough, if we're strong enough, and if we persevere the way we've proven we can, we can do anything. It will take sacrifice. There will be pain and there will be defeat but there will also be joy, there will be growth, and there will be triumph. Take this disappointment in stride and know that you've accomplished something great. You are now a college graduate. There's a chance that you're the first college graduate in your family. Graduation ceremony or not, that's amazing. And this virus cannot take that away from you. No one can. Congratulations to each and every one of you for graduating this year, and here's to our future.
Hello, graduates. My name is Rich Chupon. I live here in Homer and I teach creative writing for the University of Alaska Anchorage, both in Anchorage and here at the Catch Make Bay campus of the Kenai Peninsula College. Uh, months ago, when the director of the college, Dr. Reed Brewer, asked me to speak to you on this truly historic occasion, and I say historic because this is a graduating class of students who could not be stopped by a catastrophic global pandemic. I pictured a room full of smiling new, new graduates bathed in the sunlight, streaming into the beautiful Kachemak Bay campus commons. I did not picture being alone in my spare bedroom talking to a machine. As Jim Morrison of The Doors said, strange days have found us. But I'm very proud to be addressing you. And I'd like to talk to you today about poker playing and space aliens. Professional poker players often commiserate about something they call bad beats. A bad beat is, uh, happens when a player is dealt a really good hand of cards, but because of completely uncontrollable bad luck, they lose that hand anyhow. Say you're holding two high pair like kings and aces, and some fool at the table rides a pair of twos all the way to the last card and ends up with three of them. Yes, three of a kind, no matter how small, beats two pair, even aces and kings. Now that's a very bad beat and really rotten luck. Well, the novel coronavirus is the unthinkably bad luck that fell on you in the middle of the, your last semester of college this year. But you did not let that become a bad beat. You didn't let it beat you. You scrubbed your hands and you wore your mask when you needed to and most importantly, you adapted. You found a way to complete your studies using distance ed or Zoom, whatever, Blackboard. You did what it took, and that's no small thing. If you remember the movie Men in Black, you'll know it's a great science fiction story in which the Earth is threatened by a hostile alien attack. An older MIB agent called K, played by Tommy Lee Jones, says to the new recruit J, played by Will Smith, quote, there's always an alien battle cruiser or an intergalactic plague about to wipe out life on this planet. The only way humans get on with their happy lives is if they do not know about it. The coronavirus of 2020 is no fiction. It's a very real threat to us all. And unlike that movie, there's no keeping it a secret. This is a historic event. There hasn't been a pandemic threat of this magnitude and of this deadly potential in more than 100 years. And still, you did not let that stop you. That makes you part of a proud history of Americans pulling together in time of desperate need. People who could not be stopped. People like you. Let me tell you a true story. In 1942, my father graduated from high school in December of his senior year because the US military fighting in the Second World War needed troops and could not wait until June. Forget college, he was on a battlefield somewhere in Europe by the time his 18th birthday rolled around. Like you, he did not let them stop him from getting an education. When the war ended, he came back and enrolled in a small college, a lot like ours. He took classes in the day and worked as a security guard at night and he managed to complete a bachelor's degree because he didn't want to end up like his father, my grandfather, an uneducated peasant from Italy who spent his life pushing a broom on the floor of a factory. My father was the first person in our family to graduate from college. I was supposed to be the second. That didn't happen. Unlike you, I failed miserably. I started college when I got out of high school in 1966 and flunked out almost immediately. I didn't go back for 20 years and didn't finish my undergrad degree until 1991. That's right, 25 years. It took me a quarter of a century to accomplish what most of you just did in two or three or four years. And I wasn't faced with anything as dire as this. It wasn't an unfair bad beat. I just played my cards all wrong. So I mean it when I say I'm honored to speak to you. And because graduation speeches are supposed to inspire graduates to continue to achieve great things in their lives, let me say this. You wanna be inspired, class of 2020? Look in the mirror. Staring back at you as someone who faced down a horrifying 
enemy, as scary as any sci-fi alien ever cooked up by Hollywood. You're someone who made history today, and there is no doubt that you're going to keep on doing that, whether you pursue more education or go into the world of work and business. So I'd like to end by saying, always remember the words of Galaxy Quest Starship Commander Captain Jason Nesbitt whenever his crew and their ship are threatened by alien attackers. Never give up, never surrender. Thank you very much for making history right here in Catchback Bay, Alaska. And congratulations once again. It gives me great pleasure to recognize John Torgerson as the University of Alaska Board of Regents has approved him for an honorary doctorate of humane letters. The criterion for individuals to receive an honorary degree is evidence of a significant and lasting contribution to the university, to the state of Alaska, or to the individual's discipline or profession. He meets all of these. John's biography is four pages long, single spaced. I want to highlight just a small number of his accomplishments. He has been a resident of the state since 1950 and served in the U.S. Army for three years where he received his GED. Most recently, he served as the interim federal co-chair of the Denali Commission from April 2018 to April 2019, and it's expected he will become the interim again soon. He was an Alaska State Senator from 1994 to 2004 and served on many committees, including being the co-chair of finance, the most powerful committee. He was the Deputy Commissioner of Transportation, responsible for the Alaska Airport System, and served as Acting Deputy Commissioner of the Alaska Marine Highway System. Just three months ago, he was selected by the governor to serve on the governor's committee to determine the future of the Marine Highway System. He was the acting director and business manager of the Alaska Division of Agriculture and was acting director of the Alaska Vocational Technical Center in Seward, referred to as AFTEC. He was a board member on the Governor's Task Force on Medicaid and also served as a Kenai Peninsula Borough Assembly member. I could list at least another 30 accomplishments and positions he has held. One of his most enduring legacies to the University of Alaska in our state was that while co-chair of the Senate Finance Committee in 2000, he authored and sponsored legislation that created the Technical Vocational Education Program, commonly known as TVEP. Since that time, the University of Alaska has re received approximately $100 million in Alaska technical schools many millions to support vocational education, to provide training and equipment, enhancing Alaska's workforce development efforts. Just in FY20 alone, the University of Alaska received $5.6 million in funding. Senator Lisa Murkowski wrote a letter of support for John. The page long letter stated, I have known John for many years and can't think of a more deserving recognition of John's accomplishments to receive this honorary degree. And in closing, she said, John's dedication and public service to Alaska is astounding, and I cannot think of a better individual to receive such recognition. The citation and degree that John will receive states as follows. University of Alaska Anchorage. The Board of Regents of the University of Alaska upon recommendation of the university faculty have conferred upon John Torgerson the honorary degree of Doctorate of Humane Letters given by the University of Alaska this third day of May, 2020. Signed, Kathy Sandine, UAA Chancellor, Sherry Beretta, Chair of the Board of Regents, and Jim Johnson, United, University of Alaska President. Thank you, Director Turner. I want to thank the Board of Regents, 
President Johnson, Chancellor Sandine, the staff at the Kenai River Campus, and all the Alaskans I've worked with over the years to make something like this possible for me. Thank you. Hello, I'm Sherry Beretta, Regent and Chair of the Board of Regents for the University of Alaska. I want to just say that these are extraordinary circumstances that I deliver this message to you, uh, but I have so much uh, joy in my heart for all of you to have achieved your goals of graduation and your degrees. So with that, I would like to ask graduates, please stand. By virtue of the authority vested in me as a member of the University of Alaska Board of Regents, I hereby confer the degrees to which you are entitled with all the rights, privileges, honors, and responsibilities pertaining hereto. Graduates, change your tassel from the right side to the left side of your caps. Congratulations, you may be seated. Thank you for allowing me to say a few words. My name is Reed Brewer, and I'm the director of the Kachemak Bay campus of Kenai Peninsula College. As I started this position in June 2019, this is my first UAA commencement, and fortunately for you, this will be the shortest talk that I ever give. For the Kenai Peninsula College, this commencement 2020 represents 50 years of celebrating student success and achievement, and now you're a part of that long history. Your path, like so many others, started with a dream or a wish and has brought you to where you stand today, but this is just the beginning. When I graduated from my undergraduate degree um, so many years ago, I remember my mother giving me a Dr. Seuss, Dr. Seuss book called, Oh, the Places You'll Go. And since you can't have a graduation speech without a famous quote or reference, I chose a quote from this book by Theodore Seuss Geisel. It goes like this. You have brains in your head and you have feet on your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know and you are the one who will decide where you go. You'll get mixed up, of course, you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. Be sh so be sure when you step, step with great care and tact and remember that life's a great balancing act. Out there things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along, you'll start happening too. So be your name Buxbaum or Bixby or Bray or Mordecai Alley, Ben Allen O'Shea. You're off to great places, today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. I love this quote because it has so many reference to commencement, uh, particularly with the varied past that, that lay before you and the challenges that we all know that you'll overcome. For all of you, this is a huge milestone. You've been working for months and even years, taking classes, prepping for exams, turning in assignments, all of which have led you to this point right here, right now. Like so many large achievements, you likely had help in completing your studies. So now is the time to reflect on your support network of significant others, parents, siblings, friends, and classmates that helped you on your journey. Now is the time to think back to those faculty that helped you a little bit extra, or that staff member that calmly helped you through an issue with registration. Now is the time to consider that next step 
be it work, another degree, or something else entirely. And despite the current socioeconomic challenges of the world, you are here, right now, ready for that next step. So today, I represent the Kachemek Bay campus, faculty, and staff, and saying congratulations. You did it. We're all very proud of you, and we look forward to hearing about your future as you take this next big step on your next path. Now is the time. Congratulations. On behalf of KPC faculty, we wish our graduates of the class of 2020 our biggest congratulations.